when we look at those choices, what I always say is look at what your pain point is, right? So do you have a clostridial infection in the fairing house? Do you have an E. coli infection in the wiener barn or grow finish? What then product do you need to treat it at best cost and so you don't also develop antibiotic resistance? So it really goes back to some basics, right? An antibiotic is a substance that kills bacteria. Probiotic is a living organism that goes to the gut and changes the gut environment to be able to then allow that animal to proceed through its normal genetic uptake. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Andrew Yerson, the Senior Vice President of Worldwide Quality and Technical Services at Kimmin. So Andrew, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Clayton, and, and thanks for all the great you work work you do at Carthage. It's an awesome uh, industry partner for many, many of the folks in the swine industry. I've been with Kemen for 20 years, started in tech service, then migrated to quality, R&D, back to quality. But in essence, what I try and do is showcase solutions that work for products in our environment with the swine poultry industry. So think of me as a troubleshooter. Think of me as a problem solver with the main idea of what pain point do you have today in your operation, feed conversion, mortality, performance, how do we find the best next alternative to help you out. And it may not be a Kemen product, right? It could be somebody else's or a contact in the industry. Hey, this vet needs this vet to connect to solve the problem. And then the other key focus is making sure all our manufacturing, our raw materials and our products meet the quality standards that the feed industry needs. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Gotcha. So speaking of alternatives, I see you have some experience at Kemen working with antibiotics and probiotics. And with all the different environmental regulations and such, whenever we as an industry can smoothly transition from antibiotics to probiotics, obviously that's a good thing. So with some of the work you've seen out in the field regarding that switch from antibiotics to probiotics, what would you see has been the most beneficial? Great question. And so most of the veterinary community knows that in the U.S., there was a shift from using growth promotion antibiotics to direct disease prevention and treatment antibiotics. And with that shift, there was a whole focus also on alternatives, primarily probiotics, symbiotics, et cetera. And so the work that we've tried to do is look at where is the value proposition against what I'm trying to deal with in the field. And so that's really the place, Clayton, where you look at an antibiotic is very specific. It's designed as the best tool to treat an infection, especially those bacterial infections, yet in many cases, those tools are being taken away from us by our regulatory agencies, right, or other proponents. Whereas when you have a probiotic, it's not the same as an antibiotic, right? We have to remember that antibiotics have a direct application. It can be oral, it can be water feed, it can be injectable, right? Whereas a probiotic is only gonna be delivered via the consumption. It's only going to get to the target spot, which is the gut, not the systemic circulation by either water or feed. So then when we look at those choices, what I always say is look at what your pain point is, right? So do you have a clostridial infection in the fairing house? Do you have an E. coli infection in the wiener barn or grow finish? What then product do you need to treat it at best cost? And so you don't also develop antibiotic resistance. So it really goes back to some basics, right? An antibiotic is a substance that kills bacteria. Probiotic is a living organism that goes to the gut and changes the gut environment 
to be able to then allow that animal to proceed through its normal genetic uptake. So there are a lot of things that people need to consider when trying to choose a probiotic, just to make sure they're dotting all their I's and crossing all their T's. So what would you say are some of the best practices for using probiotics and antibiotics? Yeah. So the key for me is like any other additive you would use, check the label. And then also in checking that label, understand mode of action and function. With antibiotics, they were designed to have different class structures to either go after the bacteria to impede DNA synthesis, to go after the bacteria to shut down cellular processing, and so very specific actions between the different classes, right? Whereas a probiotic essentially should achieve three basic processes. It's either going to colonize and create an environmental barrier between the commensals and the pathogens, surface interaction. It's going to secrete something as a substance that acts similarly as an antibiotic by either puncturing a cell wall, creating different DNA synthesis characteristics. And then the third big thing that it has to do, it has to have an observable effect in the animal. And that observable effect is either a change in the microbiota of the gut or a change in the immunology of the animal and its response. But it's got to show a response that you can measure. Gotcha. So when it comes time to make a decision on whether or not you want to do antibiotics or probiotics, there's those two options. And then there's obviously all different kinds of antibiotics and probiotics. So how do you decide which type of probiotic or antibiotic is best to use for your farm? First off, I always look at <clears throat> where's the cost ratio and what disease do I have, right? What am I trying to treat? And I want it to be as specific as possible. I don't want to use a generic all general antibiotic if I know I have a specific organism I'm dealing with. And so that's where your diagnosis has to be key. You want to isolate what problem you have then look at your treatment options relative to an antibiotic for that. The other consideration is when we look at a cost basis, is there then also where I want to move away from some antibiotic use because of either whether relative to the consumer groups I'm targeting in my markets, whereas in you know, the entire antibiotic-free platform, and that's where then the probiotics can come into play but you still have to define what's my mode of action. And key is it's stable in the environment in the animal. Can the probiotic get through your feed mill if you're also making pelleted feed versus mash feed? So is it heat stable? Is the probiotic also able to get through the gastric digestive tract, the enzymes and the acids to get to the lower gut to have an effect? Will your product also then meet any shelf life criteria, right? So think of a simple analogy. Yogurt is loaded with probiotics. Yogurt needs to sit in the fridge, right? You can't leave it on the counter or you get exposure. So that's where it's key to understand labeling. Is it a lactobacillus? Is it a commensal? Does it target a pathogen? And more than anything, is there data, right? To, to, you've got to have either refereed papers You've got to have either on-farm trials, but you got to have something more than, hey, try this, you'll like it. There's got to be substantiated evidence to show that the product works and then test it and measure it accordingly. Gotcha. So speaking of data and testing and all that, that's something I personally am very familiar with, with everything I've done here at Carthage. But that's definitely a very important piece when it comes to developing a product. So when setting up these trials with probiotics or antibiotics, how would you say is the best way to set your key performance indicators? Yeah, so I always look at <clears throat> the key performance metrics should be things that you're measuring all the time. You have a comfort level with. There's a consistent response and not variability, right? So I'll, I'll give you an example. I know, I know total different industry, if you will, but the poultry industry, right? Some of those large poultry performers on feed conversion, can't see two, three points difference, right? Because of the variation in their operations. So then you've got to be able to design your trial to meet the metrics of what you're trying to measure. If it's not feed conversion performance, can you tight it enough to make it? 
Is it body weight? Is it taking how many units out of the farrowing unit across to the wiener unit? Is it getting how many, quote, pounds or kilos of meat out of the grow fin unit? Is it sow mortality? Identify the metric that works for you. Don't necessarily look at just the industry standard and try to play to the, you know, poor call of fame blue book. It's got to be for your operation. Your operation is totally different than anybody else's. Similarities, yes, but you know what makes it work in your house. So design it accordingly. Try and get as many replicates as you can so you can see a response. Is it pen to pen, house to house, farm to farm, but design it so you actually can measure something. Awesome. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Andrew, for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Great. And thanks for having me, Clayton. I'd like to leave one important take home message. So if people remember anything from this talk, just remember all antibiotics aren't the same in their mode of action and neither are the probiotics. If the label says bacillus, it doesn't mean that all bacillus are the same. If it says a bacillus, they're not all the same, right? So focus on what you need, how to use it, make it work. And folks, thanks for listening. I'd like you to also, if you have more questions or information, please reach out to kemen.com forward slash swine. Thanks and have a great day and best success in your industry. Absolutely. And to everyone else listening, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.